What up? All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about cholesterol. So I don't want to get too in depth. My goal in this video is to just summarize the information that I've gathered and share my opinion, and then also link down below these studies and some sources of information that you can check out if you so desire. So, like I said, I'm not a professional. This isn't professional medical advice. I'm simply sharing uh, my perspective, the information that I've gathered, and I just want to convey it to you just so you can have an alternative perspective. All right, guys, so what I did is I found some slides and I put them together to convey this information to you. So uh, the first question is, what is cholesterol? And, uh, you know, these percentages, they're definitely going to vary to some degree, but this is just going to give you a general idea about cholesterol and what it is and how it's utilized and how the body makes it. So to start, it is a steroid. Uh, you know, I would say roughly 80% is made by the liver. You know, roughly 20% comes from the diet. It's definitely going to vary. Uh, the brain is composed of roughly 80% cholesterol. Uh, every cell wall in the body does have cholesterol in it. And another important factor of cholesterol is that the body makes uh, hormones from cholesterol, such as vitamin D, estrogen, uh, testosterone, DHEA. And so cholesterol is extremely important. Uh, you know, it also has other important functions such as immunological function. Uh, you know, it's very important for digestion uh, and just other reparative processes. And so here we're gonna go on and talk about how cholesterol is transported in the body and why the terms HDL and LDL are associated with cholesterol. All right, so this is commonly the context in which we talk about cholesterol. It is HDL cholesterol, or commonly referred to as good cholesterol, and then LDL cholesterol, which is commonly referred to as cholesterol. So the first thing I'm going to say is that there is no such thing as good cholesterol or bad cholesterol. Cholesterol is cholesterol. And HDL means high density lipoprotein, LDL means low density lipoprotein. So HDL and LDL are transport vehicles for cholesterol. Uh, what they do is they transport cholesterol as well as other substances through the bloodstream. Fat-based substances cannot travel through the bloodstream on their own. Therefore, they need some sort of a carrier and these carriers are lipoproteins. There are other lipoproteins such as VLDL or very low lipoprotein. HDL will bring cholesterol back from route. So uh, HDL cholesterol is the cholesterol that's coming back to the liver. LDL cholesterol is the cholesterol that's going from the liver to the, you know, wherever it needs to go, whatever type of localized tissue. So the last little bit I want to touch on with this slide is uh, at the bottom here, it says your total cholesterol is made up of your LDL and your HDL. This is incorrect. When you add your LDL and your HDL together and subtract that from your total cholesterol, there is a bit of cholesterol left over, and this is called remnant cholesterol. And this is another indicative factor for insulin resistance. Uh, remnant cholesterol is also a very good factor for um, trying to see if you have any issues going on. All right, so I wanna give a shout out to Dave Feldman and his work he's done with cholesterol because this slide comes directly from his website, which I'm gonna post a link down below. I highly recommend checking it out. So this is where cholesterol gets extremely interesting because here it shows we have a lipoprotein, an LDL particle, but if we take a look here, the orange round circular objects are triglycerides, and then the yellow is the cholesterol, and then down in the bottom right-hand corner, we have fat-soluble vitamins. So what this is showing is that lipoproteins not only transport cholesterol, but they transport triglycerides and fat-soluble vitamins. And what's even more interesting is that the majority of 
LDL particles uh, contain a greater amount of triglycerides. So L what LDL particles are doing is they're not only carrying cholesterol around the body, they're actually primarily used as an energy transport system for triglycerides. It's common in the low carb communities uh, for people to think of ketones as the primary source of fuel being used on a high fat diet, but this is not true. Uh, triglycerides are still the uh, number one source of fuel for the body when it comes to uh, running on a fat based fuel. And so the reason why so many people have their LDL shoot up when they go on a low carb, high fat diet is because they're fat-based energy demands increase. Therefore, their LDL will increase just to transport more triglycerides. So LDL is just so much more complex than say the American Heart Association makes it out to be. Uh, you know, there are multiple factors to be considered when looking at LDL. And just cholesterol in itself being high is just not an indicator of uh, cardiovascular disease. It's been shown time and time again I'll post some more studies down below and we'll go over them later on in this video as well. So as these particles travel around, such as LDL particles, once they have dropped off the triglycerides, once they have released the cholesterol and the fat soluble vitamins, they will then convert into HDL particles and make their way back to the liver. So uh, there's, there's really, I mean, LDL particles, HDL particles, VDL particles, they uh, have transformative capabilities. And so they just restructure themselves depending on what type of a load they're carrying. They want to be as efficient as possible. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's really no difference between cholesterol. Cholesterol is cholesterol. It's just kind of, we're just referring to how it's packaged. All right, so this slide comes straight out of Dave Feldman's website. Like I said, I'll post a link down below, but I just wanna reiterate the fact that uh, our demand for triglycerides is greatly increased on a high fat diet. So as you can see here, your cells need energy on a high fat diet. The primary source are triglycerides and to get triglycerides into the cells, your body will produce, or specifically the liver will produce very low density lipoproteins, also called VLDLs, which eventually remodel into LDLs within 30 minutes to, uh, to one hour after they have offloaded their energy into the cell. Uh, and these VLDLs contain both triglycerides and cholesterol, but mostly triglycerides. All right, so why is there so much fear surrounding cholesterol and saturated fat? And it would have to be, drum roll, Ansel Key. So <clears throat> Ansel Key is, is like the, the godfather of the, the hypothesis that saturated fat leads to uh, cardiovascular disease. He completely falsified studies showing that cholesterol causes heart disease. In this slide, you can see one of the studies that he completely falsified. He had data points from 22 countries. And when he put together this study, he only included six of those countries because the other countries did not fall in line with his hypothesis. Um, so the American Heart Association still uh, basically uses this information and teaches this information that has been proven false time and time again. And even in his day, which I think it was around the 1950s, uh, this, I mean, he was called out for it because so many people at the time knew that a diet consisting of high amounts of saturated fat did not cause cardiovascular disease. But you guys obviously know that, you know, money is power. And that if somebody has a lot of money, that they can be highly influential, even if their studies and their information is total bullshit. Uh, not only Keyes, but Procter and Gamble as well. You know, they, it's so funny, the American Heart Association uh, promotes vegetable oils as being healthy because they were paid off by Procter and Gamble back in the day to promote Crisco as a heart healthy alternative to saturated fats. 
because they couldn't sell Crisco to the automotive industry as engine grease. All right, so if we just take a look at the data nowadays, there are many studies showing that there is a inverse relationship between high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease, meaning that high cholesterol levels are associated with disease prevention and longevity. And like I said, I'm gonna link those studies down below. All right, so now I'm gonna to begin to go over some examples. All right, so here is a study that was published in the British Medical Journal that shows not only is high LDL cholesterol not a risk factor for all-cause mortality, nor for cardiovascular mortality, uh, but just the reverse is true. There is a perfect inverse relationship between LDL cholesterol and all-cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality. In fact, cardiovascular mortality was highest in those with lowest LDL cholesterol, meaning that higher levels of LDL cholesterol have shown uh, qualities of disease prevention, longevity, uh, reparative factors and protective factors. All right, guys, like I'm saying, cholesterol in itself is not the bad guy. So we need to be taking a look at other factors such as trigl uh, triglyceride levels, remnant cholesterol, insulin levels, inflammatory markers. Uh, you know, the role of elevated cholesterol or of tr uh, triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol. Uh, is a greater risk factor than just having high LDL cholesterol in and of itself. So for example, somebody with high HDL, high LDL with low triglycerides is not gonna be at risk like someone with low LDL, high HDL, but also having high triglyceride levels. So just by saying that cholesterol being high is indicative of, uh, of cardiovascular illness or associated with it is just not enough evidence in determining whether that person is at a higher risk for, um, let's just say, health issues. All right, guys, so this is just another paragraph from an article talking about how elevated triglyceride levels are more of an issue than LDL or HDL cholesterol in itself. We need to be looking at the ratios rather, or like the whole picture rather than just little snippets of it. We need to know like, we need to know more about insulin. We need to know more about triglycerides, more about remnant cholesterol, rather than just looking at uh, the relationship between HDL and LDL cholesterol. So an example I like to use and an easy way to understand this is that so we have a house that's burning down the firemen are always at the scene uh, helping to put out the fire but just because you always you know just because firemen are always associated with a house burning down doesn't mean that they're the ones that are burning the house down and this is the way that cholesterol is portrayed cholesterol is portrayed as a bad guy because it's always at the scene of the crime but it's not Cholesterol isn't the one committing the crime. Cholesterol is trying to repair and mitigate damage and it gets a bad rap because it's always associated with uh, you know, atherosclerosis and other cardiovascular issues when it's just trying to repair and mitigate the damage. Just because police are always at the scene of a crime doesn't mean that they're the ones committing the crime. We need to be taking a closer look into the causative factors of what's really going on. Okay, with that being said, the most common cause of high triglycerides are obesity and poorly controlled diabetes. So uh, diabetes is directly associated with insulin resistance. Uh, so it also says if you are overweight and are not active, you may have high triglycerides, especially if you eat a lot of carbohydrates or sugary foods or drink a lot of alcohol. I just, do not believe that carbohydrates in themselves are an issue, but I think what's more of an issue are the, you know, the more refined carbohydrates, just the packaged goods, all the, let's just call them inflammatory foods, and these foods that really spike insulin, which reduce our body's ability to burn and, well, let's just say utilize triglycerides for energy, so the cell's not able to utilize them, so the triglycerides are just floating around the blood, uh, causing damage, and that's why we tend to see high levels of triglycerides. Um, 
And so, I mean, even if we look at somebody eating, uh, like say like a, a high fat, low carbohydrate diet that doesn't eat a lot of sugar, but intakes a ton of saturated fat, um, they generally have low triglyceride levels because their body is very efficiently using those triglycerides. They're not just floating around the bloodstream uh, and not being utilized in the cell. The cells are uptaking them very efficiently. Therefore, there's not an issue. The issue comes when we're not able to utilize the fuel, just, you know, whether it be fat-based or, you know, or glucose-based. If our body isn't able to utilize the fuel source and it just floats around our body, it's going to cause um, oxidation and damage long-term. All right, here's the final slide, but I think it is one of the most important. So hopefully you're still with me up until this point. So overall, an inverse trend is found in Japan between all-cause mortality and total LDL cholesterol levels. Mortality is highest in the lowest cholesterol group without exception, and this trend is universal. And elderly people with the highest cholesterol levels have the highest survival rates, respective of where they live in the world. So this just goes to show us that cholesterol is very protective. Uh, it is helping our body. It's not harming our body. There's something else that's harming our body in cholesterol. It's the good guy trying to repair and mitigate damage and keep us healthy. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'm going to do a follow-up video talking a little bit more about, you know, what I think the real underlying issues are with our food. So stay tuned for the next video. Give this one a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and stay tuned till next time, guys.